Good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, January the 5th, 2021. It is currently 1247 p.m. Central Time. And my wife just called and said, you need to come home soon. <laughs> she needs me at the, uh, uh, back at the house. Back at the house. She needs me back at the house. Back at the home front. <laughs> okay. That just sounds very Texan and country. She needs me back at home. Right? Back at the house. Back. Okay, whatever. Um, so I, 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 I probably shouldn't start this now. I told her, look, I've got to do at least one more thing because, because the people demand it, right? Because the people, the people have spoken and they have said, give us more Greek words of the day. Well, actually no one has spoken. <laughs> no one has said a word about the Greek word of the day, but I look, we've started this and I, I don't want to give up yet. I don't like giving up. I like, I like continuing. So we're going to continue, and because, look, even if it doesn't benefit, benefit anybody else, I, I like doing this. I like look, look, taking one Greek word and then seeing where that takes me in my biblical meditation, where, where it leads, to, uh, leads me theologically. And I think it's just a great way to be able to do kind of a devotional study in a different format, in a different way. Yes, you learn a Greek word. Yes, you get to laugh at the way I say the Greek word. Yes, and people have had, now, I have had people email me laughing at me, okay? So, so hey, if I'm entertaining, that that's wonderful, right? If my, if my messing up, look, I mess up the English language enough. So uh, if my messing up a Greek word entertains you, if I can at least bring a little joy to your day, then I'm all for it. And I know some people like, and I've also, re- I, see, I've received a lot of criticism over this. Why do you play the, the pronunciation of the Greek word through the Blue Letter Bible app? Let me state it again. I'm, I'm doing that. Look, I can listen to it, go, okay, that's how I say the word. And then I could come across like, I'm so smart and I know Greek. I've done everything in my power for this series that we're doing, this Greek word of the day. I've, I've, I've done everything in my power to try not to make it come across like, look at us, we're learning Greek, we're smarter than all of those Christians who don't know Greek. I, I don't want it to come across that way because then it becomes about building ourselves up in ego and arrogance and pride. I, I want it to come across like, hey, here's the word of God. The New Testament was written in Greek. Let's use these Greek words to get us to study about theology and let us grow in our understanding of theology. Let us partake of the scriptures. Let us let this benefit us spiritually. So I've tried to do everything I can to, to come across that, like, I'm just with you and that, and that we're going to look up the word together. We're going to hear it pronounced together and then I'll mispronounce it. But the point is, it's about the deeper things that we're learning. I've tried... I've structured this on purpose to come across a certain way so that we don't puff ourselves up, that that we are actually confronted with deep spiritual theological truths that should humble us. So I know I've got to get, I've got, my my wife is going to send me a message going, would you stop talking? Okay, I, 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 look, I'm doing the best I can here, right? Because the people, again, the people want this, right? It's for the people, okay? It's for the people, all right, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just for me. But here we go. We're going to continue our study of, the, well, we're going to continue with another episode in this ongoing series on the Greek word of the day. And we will continue this series um, for a little while. We'll see if it's worth it, if it's worth the time and effort. I think it is. I'm going to probably just do this on my own. If I do it on my own, well, then if I'm doing it on my own, why not turn on the microphone and share it? There's got to be somewhere, some person, somewhere who appreciates it, and for that person, then I'll do that for them, right? Because ultimately, it's for me as well, all right? So let's remind ourselves. If you have a, well, you can do this. If you have the Blue Letter Bible app, Blue Letter Bible app, uh, look up Romans chapter 8, go to verse 15, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. All right, very important verse. I could start trying to break it apart again, but I'm I'm not. All right, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. If we open that up and go to the interlinear, we go down to the word Father. Remember, it was this Greek word. This was the Greek word that we learned for the word Father. There, it's this Strong's G thirty nine sixty two, Pater, Pater. Pater, 
pater. Now, I know I've said it probably 500 different ways, but pater is the correct way to say it. And we talked about that, and we looked at uh, the, 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 the book that we're utilizing. Remember, the, uh, the Word of the Day book that we're utilizing. Again, you can see the book and order the book if you go to the Theology Central Book Club at Amazon. If you need to find the book club link, go to theologycentral.net, go to the blog section, scroll down. I think it's, uh, you'll find it really quick. It'll say Theology Book Club. Follow the link. Join the Theology Book Club. You can see the book. You should order a copy for yourself. If you have a Kindle, it's very cheap, like $4.00. And uh, it's, it'll give you the Greek word of the day. Using that book, remember, they, they did something interesting. They went back in a sense, uh, you know, pater is the, is the Greek word, but they went back to the Old Testament Jewish understanding of the fatherhood of God and gave us, what, five or six things to, to help us understand that perspective. Now, today, we're going to continue with this idea of the fatherhood of God and God being father. And we're not going to look at this Greek word anymore. Let me play that again. We're not going to listen to this one anymore. Strong's G, 3962. Pater. Pater. We're not going to look at pater anymore. We're going to look at a different word. In fact, if you go back to Romans chapter 8, verse 15, let me read it to you again. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Pater is Father. This time, they want us to look at the word Abba, all right? And it's this Greek word. The Greek word Abba is this Greek word. Here we go. Maybe, if I get it to play. Here we go. Strong's G5, Abba, Abba. Abba, Abba, or Abba, Abba is the Greek word, Abba. And it means father, so it's kind of interesting the way that is that shows up. Abba, Father, Father, Father. Um, in fact, so let's do this. Let's go to Romans 8.15 because I think this is interesting. Let's look up at how this verse is translated in a number of translations, right? Because Abba, Abba, okay, Pater, uh, both of these words mean the idea of father. So let's look at how some translations handle this. Right, um, most say Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba. I think they all do. Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father. Okay, yeah, all of them. Um, well, okay, well, the ones just says instead we become his children and call him our Father, our Father. That's how uh, one translation has it. Uh, oh, and uh, the Good News translation says this: we cry out to God, Father. My father, father, my father. That's another way. So it's really emphasizing. It seems to me the way this is structured is to really emphasize to us that God is our father, our father, 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 that that it's really emphasizing. It's it's placing a great emphasis on there. Um, uh, This is... uh, Okay, this is uh, how one commentary puts it. The repetition is one of endearment and entreaty taking from the natural impulse of children to repeat a beloved name in different forms, all right? So it's the idea that like a child, hey, uh, you know, daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, and they will will say it more than just once. They say it twice. It's a term of endearment. It's it's, it's, It's forceful. Abba, father, father, father. So it's really stressing this, but used using two different terms, pater and abba, all right? So what is the significance of this and what can we learn? Well, let's go to the book that we've been utilizing. I'm going to open up my notes here. And we're going to look at what they have to say in, re, in, re, in, re, in regards to abba or abba and what, what it tells us and what we can learn from it, all right? Let's work through this and see what we can learn, all right? And I'm going to go as quickly as I can because, again, I have places to be. So here we go. In spite of the great view Old Testament Jews had of God as Father, tragically, they lost sight of the intimacy of relationship between God and his people. So they, they're, they're, they're arguing that the Old Testament Jews had a, they had a great view of God as Father, but they miss the intimacy of relationship with that term. Now, you can go back and listen to the last episode. I'm not going to go back and review the six or five things that we learn about their view of God. 
Well, we, we could go back. You can go back and listen to that, all right? Uh, but they say this. So in spite of the great view Old Testament Jews had of God as father, tragically, they lost sight of the intimacy of relationship between God and his people. By Jesus' day, God as fatherhood was thought of more in terms of his overall care for Israel. The intimacy of personal relationship was gone. It even became blasphemous to mention his name, Yahweh. All right, so they say you you wouldn't even say his name. It would would be blasphemous to say his name. So it almost placed God as as a distance, distant father. And that Abba Father seems to em- emphasize the daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, the, 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 the intimacy of, of, a, of a close relationship, of a parental relationship, all right? I'm not, I'm not in any way saying we should call God mommy. I'm not saying that. I'm, saying, I'm just saying that as a child would say mommy, mommy, or, or daddy, daddy, that it's that same kind of intimate idea. Um, Abba, or Abba, is actually from the Arama- Aramaic uh, Ab, A-B, um, that's how they have it here. So it's actually from the Aramaic. Well, while the Greek pater is u- usually used to translate Abba. Abba itself appears three times in the New Testament. They said Abba appears three times in the New Testament. Let's look at them. They have Mark 1437. In fact, hang on, let's do this. Go back to the Blue Letter Bible app. Yes. All right. I'll just have them right here in the Blue Letter Bible app. So Abba appears uh, three times and three verses. All right. Here we go. First is Mark 14, 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Took, take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not, not what I will, but thou, but what thou wilt. This is Mark 14, 36. Now look, maybe look at this really quick. Mark 14, 36. Because this is interesting. Mark 14, 36. Let's look at this. Mark 14, 36. I'm going to my actual Bible because by going to the actual Bible, I can immediately see the context easier. Mark 14, 36. I'm pretty sure I know what the context is, but I don't want to say something until I can be sure of it, right? We're dealing with God's word. We want to be precise and careful here, all right? All right, here's Jesus. He's in the garden, all right? Um, he, uh, verse 34, Mark 14, 34, and he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went for a little, fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. That is a very powerful verse because that's really Abba, Father. Father, Father, Daddy, Daddy, God crying out to the Heavenly Father in a very like powerful way. Abba, Father. Again, that's Mark 14, 36. Father, Father, my Father. It's a very, very powerful verse right there. Mark 14, 36. So that's, the, well, that's another place it's used. Obviously, Abba or Abba is used in Romans 8, 15. And then by the spirit of adoption, we, we can do the same thing. See, Christ, being the eternal son of God, had this close relationship with the Father, obviously one God, three, uh, one God, three distinct persons. But there's this closeness and unity between the members of the Trinity that Jesus could say, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy, right? This intimate way. And we, because we've been adopted, now we can do the same thing. We can cry, Abba, Father. Father. We can say daddy, daddy as well. And again, I know that daddy, daddy seems to destroy the seriousness of what's going on here. It almost turns it into something sentimental. And it's not that. It's still reverential. There's still a reverence there. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's it's this close, intimate thing. And then Galatians 4, 6. Galatians 4, 6. One second here. I got to close this. All right, Galatians 4, 6. And because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Because now we are sons of God. We have the spirit of God that we can now cry, Abba, Father. We have this closeness. We're unified in a sense. We're with Christ, with the spirit, with God. And because we are now brought into this relationship that we can cry, Abba, Father. That's just very, Mark 14, 36 really adds, I mean, that's a serious emotional time for Jesus in the garden. He's about to go to the cross. 
He's about to experience some something that we can't even comprehend. And there he's saying, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, closeness. Hey, if you can remove this cup, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Please see, there's the closeness, the intimacy so that he can say, Father, take away this cup. But then there's the reverence where he says, not my will, but your will be done. Intimacy, this intimacy, closeness, relationship should not destroy the reverence. We can't allow a sentimental view of God as being daddy or father, destroy the reverence that we must have. Yes, we can cry out to him like a child crying out to its parent, but at the same time, we say, not my will, your will be done. So that is pretty powerful, all right? Now, let's go back and see what, I'm going to read all of this again. In spite of the great view Old Testament Jews had of God as a father, tragically, they lost sight of the intimacy of relationship between God and his people. By Jesus' day, God's fatherhood was thought of more in terms of his overall care for Israel. The intimacy of personal relationship was gone. It even became blasphemous to mention his name, Yahweh. Abba is actually from the Aramaic Ab, A-B, while the Greek pater is usually used to translate Abba, Abba itself, uh, or uh, to translate Abba. So usually they go with the other Greek word to, 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 to do this, all right? Abba itself appears three times in the New Testament. We just looked at all of them. It was used among Jews as the familiar term children used for their fathers, and, it, and it's used even today in Hebrew-speaking families, not only by small children, but by adult sons and daughters. An unfortunate English equivalent that has been popularized today is daddy. The term has taken on a too sentimental tone and has given away to a somewhat buddy-buddy relationship with God. More precisely, it means my father, father, my father, or dear father, which emphasizes the necessity of reverence. Historically, in, 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 in fact, okay, so so they're saying that the word daddy is kind of unfortunate. We probably maybe shouldn't use that. I Okay. All right, maybe we shouldn't use that use it that way, but um, so maybe we should use the term "my father, father, my father," or "dear father." But but I just think we we when we speak of I think because it's repeated, father, father, that the only way that we can really I, because we hear children do it all the time, so that's why I'm using the term "daddy." I, I, I look, I understand that there's a danger in using the term "daddy." And I'm not saying that I would ever say that in prayer. Hey, Daddy, I, I, you know, I, I don't think I would ever say it that way. What I want you to see, though, is that the term Abba is trying to push forth this intimacy. And it being repeated there in Romans 8.15 and in Mark, this Abba Father, Abba Father. It's this re- repetition. The only way to understand that repetition is when you hear a child recall for its parent. So many times it'll say, Mommy, Mommy, or Daddy, Daddy. That, that shows that intimacy. But at the same time, we can't allow that intimacy, sentimental idea, destroy the reverence. So I understand the warning here. It would be better to say, dear father, what, what are the suggestions they give here? Um, they offer a, uh, my father, father, my father, dear father. All right, I understand that. They said, uh, that, uh, that is, so, so they argue that the way this is used, it provides us with both this term, Abba Father, or this idea of Abba, it provides us with both a comfort and a challenge. So let's consider the comfort and the challenge. First, the comfort. The comfort we should take from this Greek word, Abba, is that, uh, is that we do have an intimacy with the Father. The Jews of Jesus' day would never have used this term, thinking it too familiar and inappropriate. But it's quite possible that Jesus used it often, which would have astounded the Jews. He demonstrated that the true believer as a son or daughter does indeed have an intimate relationship with the father. Paul captured this when he too used the term. Jesus, I'm going to say clearly there's a comfort here. Jesus was in a great distress and and he cries out, Abba, Father, my father, my father, my dear father. Or, and I know it, it maybe, I don't want to be inappropriate, but daddy, daddy. I, again, I'm just saying the repetition there. That's what comes to my mind because I hear kids do that all the time. Mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy. And you're like, okay, got it the first time. All right, got it. All right. So, but, and I, but I think there's an intimacy there, a, a power there. 
So there is an intimacy there, and we don't want to miss that intimacy. We don't ever want to miss that, that because now I've been adopted, because now I'm a child of God, I have intimacy with God the Father, the Creator, through Jesus Christ. Second, Abba, Abba, also provides a challenge. Where there certainly is an intimacy with the Father, there must also be a respect for who, who He is. That was, of course, the expression the Lord used as he prayed in the garden. In the garden, So both intimacy and respect are present. Yes, our Lord had an intimate relationship with the Father and made request of him, but there was still respect and reverence as he came into submission to the Father's will. This challenges us to be very careful not to barge into God's presence demanding our desires. We have to approach him in a reverential way. It's Abba, Father, Maybe daddy, but he is in an intimate relationship, but he is still God. He is still the father, and he needs, we should re- approach him with reverence and respect. All right? Now, here is what I want you to do for further study. I want you to look at Romans 8.15 and Galatians 4.6. Romans 8.15 and Galatians 4.6, and I want you to write down what makes the Abba relationship possible. What makes it possible for you and for me to have this Abba relationship? What what, would Romans 8.15 and Galatians 4.6, would that, does that give you the answer of what is, what uh, makes this relationship possible? You need to definitely have that down. And I'm going to let you do that on your own. All right. And remember, the other thing I challenge you to do in the last episode is go to through Matthew 5 and Matthew 6. Look at every time it uses the word father. And what does it teach you about God being father? And how does that correspond with what we learned about the Old Testament Jews of view of God as father? Remember, that was your assignment in the last one. So let's do this. Let's go back to Romans chapter 8. Verse 15, we read this, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Let's open up the antilinear. Abba, Father. Remember, the Greek word for Abba is this. Strong's G5, Abba, Abba. Abba, Abba. And let's go back to the previous Greek word that we studied for father. It's this Greek word. Strong's G, 3962. Pater. 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 Now, I know, I know, I don't say it correctly, but that's okay. Pater. Abba and pater. Those are the two Greek words for father. Okay. Now, uh, Abba, again, come Aramaic, Abba, Abba, and we, we can, we can, you know, build on all of that, but you get the basic concept there. God is Father, and He is, in a sense, our dear Father. A, 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 a an emotional term, almost one of emotion and of intimacy, and one of relationship. We we don't ever listen. That's the problem. Sometimes we can so focus on the sentimental idea of a relationship that we undermine God's uh, the the a reverential. Uh, and a God-fearing approach to God in a, in, a, in a correct way. We need both. We want to see God as, yes, we need to fear God. We need to reverence God. We need to respect God and be in awe of God. But at the same time, because of adoption, I can call him, in a sense, my dear father. I can, I can in a sense, say, and again, I'm using this term, and I'm trying to be as respectful as I can. I can, in a sense, say, daddy. But when I do say daddy, I, I do so in an intimate way, Hey, because of the of adoption, I can come to you this way, but at the same time, not my will, your will be done. All right? I think that's a powerful lesson and all of that. All right. Email me your thoughts about these Greek word studies. Are you finding them beneficial, helpful? Could I change something? Could I help you? What? what just let me know. I do these things for you, not for me. So email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. All right. Thanks for listening. God bless.